Hello everyone, this is Sirius Trivia, and today we're starting a new Let's Talk Lore series titled Denway's Northern Expedition, as we aim to cover all 11 of Denway's military campaigns against the Kingdom of Wei, spanning from the years 238 to 262. Compared to his mentor, Zhuge Liang, who launched five northern expeditions, Denway's 11 campaigns might seem numerous, but it is worth noting that his first six attempts were only minor skirmishes as the Shu Han leadership at the time in Jiangwan and later Fei Yi both did not believe in the northern expedition strategy and thus limited Jiang Wei's troop counts for these first six expeditions. And because of their smaller scale, there is also limited historical documentations on the details of many of these earlier campaigns but despite this, this series will try its best to piece together all 11 of Jianwei's northern expeditions to document all of Shu Han's military activities after Zhuge Liang's death. But before we can get to that, we have to start here in episode 1 and talk about how Jianwei joined the kingdom of Shu Han in the first place, as he was originally an officer of Wei. Born in the year 202 in the Ji County, located in the western frontier commandery of Tianshui, Jiang Wei was born to one of the four most influential local gentry clans in the Tianshui commandery, as the Jiang clan, along with the Yan clan, the Ren clan, and the Zhao clan, dominated regional politics and the local economy. Jiang Wei's father, Jiang Jiong, was a commandery inspector, working directly under the local administrator. But when Jiang Wei was just a child, Jiang Jiong would lose his life protecting the administrator in battle, during a nomadic rebellion, which was a commonplace occurrence in a frontier commandery such as Tianshui. So Jiang Wei ended up growing up with his widowed mother, who he was very attached to, and with the help of his clan, Jiang Wei would receive a classic Confucian education, learning from the works of the famed late Han scholar Zheng Xuan. And once of age, Jiang Wei would once again, through his clan's connections, would end up first working as a court scribe for the Tianshui commandery, before being elevated to work as a provincial level official for the Liang province. By his mid-twenties, Jiang Wei was recommended by the commandery administrator for an officer post in the army, but because of the Jiang Gentry clan's local ties, the clan did not want to see Jiang Wei, who is the sole surviving heir to his father's branch of the clan, to take on the officer post in the army, fearing that his military career would take him far away from home. So instead, Jiang Wei was promoted to the captain of the Tianshui Commandery Guards as he would end up remaining close to home. Then in 228, when Jiang Wei was 27 years old, Zhuge Liang launched his first northern expedition, targeting the western commanderies in the Longxi region, which included Jiang Wei's home commandery of Tianshui. Now depending on if you're using Jiang Wei's chapter in the Records of the Three Kingdoms as your source, or Wei Lue, which is a privately written historical records of the Kingdom of Wei, written by a minor Wei official in Yu Huan. The story of how Jiang Wei defected to the Kingdom of Shu Han will be slightly different. According to the records of the Three Kingdoms, when Zhuge Liang's army first arrived in Tianshui, Jiang Wei was accompanying his boss, the Tianshui Commandery Administrator in Ma Zun, on an inspection tour of the commandery. At the time, frontier commanderies such as Tianshui was poorly defended, and had largely been ignored by the central Wei government. And given how recently the founding of Wei was, most of the citizens of Tianshui still had some affinity and attachment for the previous Han dynasty. Thus, during Zhuge Liang's first northern expedition, vast majorities of the western commanderies, led by the local gentry clans, ended up surrendering immediately to the Shu Han forces. This included the Tianshui commandery, especially with Administrator Ma Zun out on the road making county inspections. Therefore, when news of Zhuge Liang's arrival reached Ma Zun, he did not immediately seek to return to the Tianshui Administrative Center in Jiang Wei's home county of Ji, but instead decided to flee by himself in the middle of the night for the Wei fortifications at Shangbang as Ma Zun, who, like most administrators during the Han and Wei periods, was an outsider as locals were not trusted by the central government to administer their own home commanderies. However, working under Ma Zun were mostly local gentry clan members, such as his commandery guard captain Jiang Wei, his commandery inspector Liang Xu, 
his chief assistant Yin Shang, and his head secretary Liang Qian, as these four officials were all with Ma Zun during this inspection tour. So hearing that most of the Tenshui counties have already surrendered to the Shu Han army, Ma Zun lost trust in his local subordinates, which is why he ended up fleeing to Shangbang alone in the middle of the night. Jiang Wei and his fellow officials, however, were equally surprised by Zhuge Liang's invasion, as they still had a sense of duty as Wei officials. So once they discovered Ma Zun's departure, they too immediately followed him to Shangbang, Yet when they arrived at Shangbang, Ma Zun had already framed them as traitors as the defenders at Shangbang refused to open the gates to let Jiang Wei's party in despite their repeated pleas. Seeing that they could not take refuge at Shangbang's fortifications, Jiang Wei's party then tried to return home to the Ji County, which as we mentioned before, was also the administrative center of the Tianshui Commandery and one of the few places that was still garrisoned with Wei forces and not yet surrendered to Zhuge Liang. However, when they returned home, they were also shut out as the local garrison did not trust them either, as they also feared that Jiang Wei's party had already defected to Zhuge Liang and was now returning as spies. So now with nowhere to turn, Jiang Wei's party was ultimately forced to surrender to Zhuge Liang's forces. Then, with Ma Su's defeat at Jieting, Zhuge Liang had to hastily retreat out of Tianshui, as Jiang Wei would be brought back and be forever separated from his family, and most importantly, his widowed mother, as the Ji County never surrendered. Now, Wei Lue's account of the events, however, slightly differs from the above records narrative, as Wei Lue claims that Jiang Wei and Ma Zun were together with the provincial prefect Guo Huai at the time of Zhuge Liang's invasion. Guo Huai immediately left for Shangbang as Jiang Wei argued for Ma Zun to return with him to the Ji County. However, Ma Zun did not trust Jiang Wei as he would choose to follow Guo Huai to Shangbang while Jiang Wei himself returned back to Ji. Now once at home, Jiang Wei was sent out as an envoy by the county to negotiate their surrender to Zhuge Liang. But before the negotiation concluded, Zhang He had already defeated Ma Su at Jieting, and Zhuge Liang hastily retreated from Tianshui, bringing Jiang Wei with him, while Jiang Wei's family, including his widowed mother, wife, and kids, would all end up being captured by Zhang He and sent to prison, as he did not have a chance to return to the Ji County. Now, what we can safely take away from both of these records is that Jiang Wei's surrender to Zhuge Liang was largely forced upon him as his boss, Ma Zun, essentially abandoned him due to paranoia, as after the conclusion of Zhuge Liang's first northern expedition, Ma Zun himself would end up being severely punished by the Wei court for essentially abandoning the Tianshui commandery, as regardless of his suspicion of the loyalty of the local gentry clans, his duty as administrator required him to remain in the administrative center of the Ji County and try to defend it instead of fleeing to the safety of Shangbang, which is not even located inside the Tianshui Commandery. Personally, between these two versions, I'm more inclined to believe in the records version of the story, as the three other officials in Jiang Wei's party all ended up joining the Shu Han court alongside him, as they would all go on to earn future positions in the Shu Han imperial court, while the Wei Lue record failed to mention their existence. For those who are curious, Liang Xu would eventually rise to the position of Da Hong Lu, or the Minister Herald, one of the nine minister positions in the Shu Han court. Yin Shang would eventually become the Zhi Jing Wu, or the Minister of the Guards, another one of the nine minister positions. And lastly, Liang Qian would eventually become Da Cheng Qiu, or the head of the Empress Palace, which is actually quite an odd assignment, as this most likely meant that Liang Qian was castrated as this position almost went exclusively to eunuchs. Last but not least, Jiang Wei himself would start off working as a Cang Cao Yuan, or the head of the supply storage in Zhuge Liang's army, where Jiang Wei's meticulous nature caught Zhuge Liang's eyes right away. We know from Zhuge Liang's letter penned for Zhang Yi and Jiang Wan 
or two of the prime minister assistants left in charge by him of the Shuhan court in Chengdu, that Zhuge Liang praised Jiang Wei for his sense of duty and detail-oriented thinking, and went as far as comparing his talent to surpass even those of Li Shao and Ma Liang, who were both promising scholars of the past that had previously served the Shuhan courts before their early death. In this same letter, Zhuge Liang would also outline a plan to test, train, and develop Jiang Wei's military talents by assigning him five to 6,000 Tiger Guard infantry units to drill, as Zhuge Liang felt that Jiang Wei had the potential to become a great general with strong intuition, personal bravery, and a sense of loyalty to the Han. Two years later, in 230, when Jiang Wei completed his military training, he was presented to Emperor Liu Shan and would be immediately promoted to the key post of Hu Jun, or the Central Guards Army, and given the title of Zheng Nan Jiang Jun, or the general who conquers the south. Then in 234, Jiang Wei would join Zhuge Liang's fifth and final northern expedition, as his key contribution here came during Shu Han's retreat after Zhuge Liang's death, when Jiang Wei ordered the rear guards to posture for a counterattack when Sima Yi initially gave pursuit. This immediately scared Sima Yi into pulling back, and thus gave the Shuhan army safe passage during the retreat. Now once back at home in Chengdu, Jiang Wei was elevated to the position as the General Inspector of the Right, given the new general title called Fu Han Jiangjun, or the General who assists the Han, and given a Marquis title as the Marquis of Pingxiang. And with these promotions and the death of his mentor Zhuge Liang, Jiang Wei was now ready to come into his own and lead his own northern expeditions, as we'll return next episode to cover some of Jiang Wei's early northern expedition attempts. So hopefully you all have enjoyed this episode, enough to consider subscribing to the channel for more content on Three Kingdoms history, or simply support the channel by leaving a comment below, or just hit that like button, as our next episode in the series will drop once this episode reaches 300 likes. And until then, bye!